Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com. It is Friday, the 29th day of October 2021. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. And we do have a little bit to talk about today, in the tropics anyway, and a lot to talk about for lower 48 weather, especially in the eastern U.S. And uh, we'll start with, you know how they have Throwback Thursday. Well, I've come up with Flashback Friday, and we'll start with that. Because way back in 2012, this was happening today. Sandy, hurricane out over the Atlantic, became an extratropical cyclone. Just prior to making landfall there in New Jersey, I was up there for that. Met a lot of fine people that I have worked with ever since. Some of which were helpful this year during uh, Henri up on Long Island. It's amazing how those connections can pay off later on down the road. I show you this not just for the old Flashback Friday uh, moniker that I just made up for this presentation today, but also because just look at the satellite presentation here. This is what Sandy looked like uh, around this time in the afternoon, actually back on October 29th of 2012. And then let's look at this. And you say, oh, you got a satellite animation, but it's not moving the, the, the correct direction, if you remember. Well, no, because this is invest area 94l today and it is not a, an extra tropical hurricane or whatever it's just 94l and i look at the two and i go hmm deep convection around the center of 94l sandy you know more organized certainly uh but it was inside this larger envelope if i can circle it and it shows up better come on you know, they're similar, all right? So I'm just not sure when we look between the two why when I read this that it says um, that it may lose its associated fronts because I'm trying to find those fronts on the satellite imagery here. Maybe it's this one down here. Maybe that one. I don't know. There's, it certainly is close to looking the subtropical to me, and it's over marginally warm water. We'll see what happens, but so far... National Hurricane Center keeping the odds of development at 30% over the next five days. But I got to tell you, that's a pretty close approximation between the two there, comparatively speaking. Uh, this even has some thunderstorms and some deep convection and lightning way off to the east of the center of low pressure there over the North Atlantic. And now before you go on saying, well, what does it matter? It's not affecting land. Well, it matters to all the ships that are out there. You know, and you got the sword fishing fleet that comes out of the northeastern U.S. doing the long line fishing, container ships, you name it. It is definitely of concern to mariners, and so it matters. Now, the name part, whether it's subtropical storm Wanda or just 94L or a big gale center over the North Atlantic, no. That doesn't matter except to us who like to label things, us human species or whatever, right? But I just thought I would compare the two for you as we start off today's discussion. Also, I was a little curious to see that National Hurricane Center did not mention any area off the coast of Africa here, because if we go back to the satellite animation there, kind of gave you a sneak peek, there's 94L. Look at all that. You know, it's like, whoa, if this was earlier in the season, August or September, we would be thinking, hmm, something's going to try to develop out there. Definitely sort of this monsoon trough that has set up an area of convergence where the air is coming together at the surface, a little bit of broad rotation overall. And the only you know issue, I guess you could say, is, well, it's the end of October, you had your chance, but still kind of interesting to see, uh, very much related to the warm water temperatures that reside down in this area, uh, often referred to, not, we don't hear it much, but it's referred to lately, much more often, if that makes any sense at all, of the Atlantic Nino, the abnormal warming of the tropical Atlantic out here near the equator, um, which is just down here, by the way. So, interesting that we have that out there. No mention from the Hurricane Center just yet. Maybe it gets a mention eventually. The rest of the tropical Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, generally nice and quiet, although some pretty brisk winds blowing across the Gulf in association with this big upper level storm system here and the wind that is funneling around the east and southeast side of this pushing the Chesapeake Bay into an area that's causing some problems. I'll show you that more in just a moment. 
So again, here is 94L. I guess there's still just enough energy around it that it is not designated as a subtropical storm by itself just yet, but again, it is awfully close in my humble opinion. Uh, a little bit of energy out here in the tropical Atlantic, not much at all in the Caribbean or the southeastern Pacific, just a few areas of vorticity. Speaking of vorticity, that is a lot of energy all spread out over a huge area. So you've got this big windstorm, especially in the eastern parts of it over here. Pretty windy in my backyard, blowing the leaves off of the trees. We've seen some high winds up in the Appalachians here. Evan Fisher, uh, the meteorologist up there out of Asheville in vicinity, posting some really neat video that I retweeted earlier today. Those high winds up along the peaks starting to denude the trees, blow the, the leaves off, strip them off, and thus will end the leaf peeping season at the higher elevations. Evan was mentioning that it's going to be more down in the valleys. But all this energy over the eastern U.S. is part of this mid-latitude storm, and it is creating some problems for our friends up here along the Chesapeake Bay area and vicinity. Look at that, flash flood, coastal flood, even a storm warning right there along the Jersey coast. Fitting, I guess, that you had the same thing, except it was a hurricane warning uh, back in 2012. So, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Different setup, certainly, a completely different setup. But, you know, here we are on the anniversary of Sandy and some pretty big problems here for some people. This is a big population area. You know that, right? All up through here. Lots and lots of people live there. It's windy, rainy, flash flooding from rain. That's why I said rainy. And, of course, from the coastal surge that's coming in. Because you got to understand, fetch the distance that wind blows over a surface of water, a body of water. The longer that fetch and the stronger the wind is, the more the water can pile up on the opposite side of that body of water from which the wind is blowing. You understand? And the fetch down here is just enough that it's piling in the water there and creating some problems both from the Atlantic, shoving the Atlantic right up into the bay in various bays, Delaware Bay and the Chesapeake Bay, and we're getting some tidal flooding. I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. So if you live up in this region, uh, this is the reason. There's this big storm, and hopefully everybody's aware of it, tuning into their local social media of trusted sources, etc. TV meteorologists, you name it, make sure you're on top of this. And if you're traveling up there today, tomorrow, through the weekend, uh, it's going to be rather nasty. So please keep that in mind. I can show you on the radar here from... Um, Mark Nissenbaum's radar site out of Florida State University. And here's some of those uh, feeder bands, if you will. Not technically, but that's just what I'll call it. Bands of rain, we'll just say that. And it is kind of trying to feed this storm, but it's not the same mechanism as a tropical cyclone, so I don't want to get too confusing there. But that is a lot of energy working its way with the uh, uh, southerly and southeasterly flow shoving the Delaware and Chesapeake Bays up against the land, and the result is this. Um, our own Kari, Kari Lindsay, uh, over on our chat from our back-end art and just research department, found this in our, um, well, we have this Discord set up, and we have sort of a pics and images and just all kinds of things that I can tap into. Really helps me. These folks act kind of like producers, you know, like the Weather Channel, they have producers that find stuff for the on-camera meteorologist. And Kari found this uh, up in the um, Maryland area at Colton Point. You know, it's pretty rough up there. This is not from a hurricane. This is from this big mid-latitude storm. And uh, trying to make me go away so we can let you focus on this. We'll take it full screen. Pretty good video that this person shot. I always appreciate the horizontal. I like the close-up of the dock, and then you get a good wide shot later on, and just a variety of different perspectives. Well done from the videographer here, assuming that this is the same person that shot it. Peter Forrester, well done. And look, a master of science in geography. Hmm, so you know what I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to start following because that's awesome. Well done there, Peter. We appreciate you sharing. Thank you, Kari, for sniffing this out. And look, they even did, uh, Peter tagged the Weather Service, Baltimore, Washington. 
So this is it. This is what that storm system right there, that is what is causing that up in that area. Uh, this big old storm system kind of stuck in the eastern U.S. So what's going to happen down the road? Well, let's take a look at the GFS and we'll outline some of the areas in blue here because this is the whole Atlantic. Well, most of it anyway, the North Atlantic. There's the west coast of Africa and there's that energy I was showing you. It's just nothing to worry about since it's late October, but because it's late October, it's pretty interesting that it's there. There's that ridge kind of lodged pretty far to the south. And why not? Look at all this other weather, all these low pressure areas up to the north of the ridge, and then another area of high pressure or another ridge over southeast Canada. So that is part of the reason why things are discombobulated in the Western Caribbean. Everything is just kind of shoved south. Because you've got all this low pressure going across the top or the higher latitudes, and then north of that, way up in Canada, more high pressure instead of just a large sprawling area of high pressure over southeast Canada that extends down into the Caribbean. In other words, if this was just like that and then there was none of this other low pressure business, you probably wouldn't have this and this would be a lot more active. And that's what it was last year because also on this date a year ago was Zeta. And I know you're like, well, why didn't you show that? Well, it's still kind of soon. You know, We're not going to flash back Friday to a year ago. We'll wait and do it in the future. Uh, but yes, it was coming up on a year ago now that we had Zeta that made landfall over here in southeast Louisiana. I was there for that, of course, as well. All right, so let's move on and show you what's what. Uh, again, that's the west coast of Africa. Here's eastern North America over here. There's 94L. Again, some energy down there. Uh, off the coast of Africa. Just interesting to watch. And then that big bowling ball of energy over the east that's causing all the headaches there along the Chesapeake Bay and vicinity. Scroll this out into time, see how things progress. I don't know, that's hanging on, getting farther south in latitude over warmer water. You know, I'm rooting for it. I'm just rooting for it just to, you know, you ever get gas and it's like, I don't know, $37.98 and you stop? Or maybe the the thing won't let you put any more in there and you're like, ooh, I want to round it up to $38 or it's $38.01. You know, you see memes about that. Let's just get Wanda just to say we used up the list and then maybe one more out in the open ocean somewhere that doesn't bother anybody. The ships can keep an eye on it. They have meteorologists that are paid six figures that keep an eye on that for them, hopefully, right? Seriously. Let's go for it. Let's root for Wanda. It'll be out over the ocean, and like somebody was saying, Casey, um, a fish called Wanda. Somebody sent that to me. Because it's out over the ocean. It's a you know, fish storm. Anyway, that looks pretty promising for this to maybe be a small subtropical storm. And it would it'd be legit. You know, Don't get me wrong. I'm not wanting them to waste a name just to sort of throw the game. It would be legit. The GFS shows a pretty tight little area of vorticity inside a larger envelope of low pressure uh, over warmer water. You know, that's not too, that's 32 north, that's, that's all right. That's in the subtropics, but water temperature is probably close to 80 out there. Why not? Anyway, this is 84 hours out. We'll drag it on out. And by the way, off of Africa, let's look at this again. Watch what happens with this area as I move that through. Just a little bit of energy tries to coalesce there by about 60 hours, quickly get sheared and fades into existence. Maybe we get a mention that would be kind of like an honorable mention, I guess. Hurricane Center can at least put an outlook for this area. You know, when have you ever seen, almost at November, a tropical weather outlook for the deep tropics off the coast of Africa? It'd just be kind of neat to see that. Anyway, this goes out to day five, day six, day seven, etc. And, oh, looky, hey, surprise, surprise, another cyclone, tropical cyclone in the southeastern Pacific, possibly, because the pattern is such, as I showed you, that we're just not getting any energy to coalesce here where we would normally look for it. Instead, it's finding favorable, uh, favorable, a favorable environment in the southeastern Pacific instead. So that is a look at the tropics. Now, if you are watching and you were one of our current supporters on Patreon, tied in with our Hurricane Track Insider site, tonight is a very important night. We are having, I'm going to host, and then we will all be there together, a Zoom 
meeting with all of us, all the tiers, everybody on Patreon that's available. I don't know it's Friday and you might be wanting to go out and see Dune or something else at the theater or there's football or whatever else. Look, I get it, but if you're sitting around with nothing to do, jump in. I've sent you a link on Patreon. This is exclusive to our patrons, but our patrons watch these videos because that's how a lot of them became patrons. They found out about me through a video just like this. Usually it's during the height of hurricane season, but I digress. Tonight, very important, we're going to talk about what's coming up for 2022, some really big ideas that I've got I want to share with you, including opening up Discord. We've been testing it with a handful of people, maybe opening up it further to other folks on Patreon and the Insider site, and just other things. You know, it's kind of an end of the hurricane season, one month to go. Where do we go from here? What's the next play as we move ahead? Because, you know, the, the crowdfunding and the overall support, the ideas, the equipment that's been donated, and yes, the actual money that has come in has helped us accomplish incredible feats over not just this year, but really the last three years. It has accelerated way beyond my expectations. It really has, and I want to be able to grow that further, and tonight we're going to talk about that. So uh, check your Patreon. If you hadn't been on in a while, you should see the post. And it's this evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I will put the meeting on YouTube when we're done. I'll put a little intro on it, edit it together, and show you what we talked about in the general social media world because I want you to see. I want you to see what we're going to be doing as we go forward. And, of course, we're on Twitter, whatever this is called now. <laughs> it just kills me. Like, we're going to just call it meta or what? I don't even know. I'm just going to ignore it. Um, you know, Facebook's big and powerful, but sometimes I don't understand. YouTube, though, has been pretty good over the past couple of decades, right? Or almost. Uh, Valentine's Day 2005, YouTube went live. And then if you want to get on Patreon, that's how. Aim your smart device at the QR code or go to patreon.com slash hurricane track and you can become a part of it. It's not just during hurricane season. No, 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 no. we got a lot of stuff planned the off-season winter storm, severe weather next year. In fact, my plan for the severe weather season in the Great Plains is grandiose. It is big. I got a good, uh, solid fix on what I want to do, taking our technology and using it in Tornado Alley in a way that is different than what the traditional storm chasers are doing. That doesn't mean it's better. I'm not saying that. There's no elite whatever going on here, but I want to bring my way of doing things to different parts of covering other weather, you know, and so we're going to talk about that tonight as well. Hope to see you there, and if you're outside of our Patreon world, as I said, don't worry, I will post the archive of tonight's meeting on YouTube over the weekend, and, you know, maybe that'll prompt you to get involved, you know, I want to be a part of that. Um, we'd love to have you. All right, have a great rest of your Friday, a great weekend ahead. I'll be around. I'll post an update over the weekend. We'll see what happens with 94L and everything else out there. And then October will be over, and that will be that. Have a good rest of your Friday. Like I said before, I'm Mark Hurricane Track.com. I'll talk to you again over the weekend.